Void family. What up, doe? Mm. Eclipse blessings. I had to pop on for the eclipse, even just for a second. How is everybody? How's everybody feeling? Matthew and uh, Sugared Eclipse carry everybody. So yeah, I think we'll pull a couple cards maybe, but I, like I said, mainly just wanted to jump on, tap in with you guys. Of course, we got a candle. <clears throat> and actually, I think Aries, Aries season, Aries new moon in Aries, right? With all of this fire energy. And actually, y'all, uh, let's, let's, we're going to look at that in just a sec. But yeah, I think connecting with fire um, will be powerful. So if you want to on your own time, um, grab you a tea light or something like that and connect with the meditation through that um and we'll go over that a little bit deeper a little bit later but yeah i think that'll be very powerful but i think we'll charge this candle um grab a few cards and actually maybe read maybe read a little something out of the upanishads jimmy mano what up, though? Y'all get to see the eclipse. Labernos, respect. Alicia. There she goes. Hey, we missed you, too. Okay, so... Okay, so yeah, connecting with fire, I think, will be powerful. Before we even get into cards, um, let's... Here, how do I do this? Screen slash camera. Let's look at this, and this is... You know, I'm not a like professional astrologer or anything. <clears throat> but let's break this down. I just want to show you guys what what I've been talking about and for you know some of you you're probably way more advanced than me in astrology maybe some of you are not some of you are just getting into it um so just to put this very basically very generally um here is the transit chart here is what the planets are doing right now here and let me keep y'all up here Hold up, can I do this? Okay, I think that's a little much. I'm just gonna minimize that for now. So here is the current transits. And if you notice, we're seeing almost everything right over here. Hold on, before I get going, going though, y'all can see the screen, right? Y'all can see the transits. I just wanna make sure. It looks like, from what I can see, it looks like you can see the screen. So I'm just going to assume. So I'm not wasting anybody's time. But here we are. Here is the transit chart. Here we have the sign of Aries right here. <clears throat> Aries is the first sign of the zodiac, right? New beginnings. It's the baby. We start with Aries. We work our way around the zodiac <clears throat> and end here with Pisces. So just off of that alone, right? Starting here at Aries, ending at Pisces, we see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six planets in the sign of Aries right now. We have Mercury, the moon, the sun, Chiron, the north, and sorry, not six planets, but we have six, six things popping off in Aries right now. Mercury, moon, sun, Chiron, north node, Venus, Oh, wait, and yeah, Neptune's still back in Pisces. So we have all of these energies here, um, and I'm still tripping, but we have, oh, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not. 
So that's Jupiter and Uranus over here in Taurus. We have all of these energies playing out in the first sign of the zodiac, which is this new beginning. It's this portal, right? The moon in Aries right now as well. And then we have back here in the last sign of the zodiac, Mars and Saturn, ho literally holding hands there. And just simply put, if we want to think about Saturn as like the planet of karma and things like that, time. <clears throat> Saturn being in the last sign of the zodiac right now. And then we go across the way over here with this south node being in Libra, right? This is where I've been talking about the relationships and karmic relationships, but karmic situations, period, overall, karmic dynamics, family dynamics, all of these things really being energetically closed off once and for all here. Um, as we you know as we move through this year so like i've been saying i don't feel like this year is going to be all sunshine and rainbows but it is such a huge step for us on our journey right this is where we like get situated in this new energy and it's going to look different for everybody but um just generally speaking this is where we get situated so let's see get back to this <clears throat> So I just wanted to break that down um, to kind of explain what I'm seeing here and how this is playing out. Like I said, I'm not a professional astrologer. That was tropical astrology, but, um, you know, huge endings, karmic endings, brand new beginnings, and we're in the pause, we're in the pause phase. So I think today we'll do... <clears throat> Maybe a pick a card, three piles, pick a pile, and we'll just, we'll start one, then go two, three, we'll just grab a, a few cards or a message from each pile. <clears throat> so I think right now, think of a number one through three, what pile would you like to, what pile is yours, what pile is your intuition telling you is yours, and then we will get into that. And I think before we do that, we'll grab one of these um, alchemy. Silver on the bottom. So yeah, we'll do three quick messages. Like I said, this is less about the message tonight and more so just about us connecting. And like I said, I'd like to maybe read something from the Upanishads so we can all get into that meditative space. Um, so that way we can go and do our, you know, little prayers slash rituals on our own from that, uh, space of awareness, from that, from that space of union with, with the divine, with spirit. So what's the message for the collective tonight, spirit? been a lot of very intense energies playing out copper on the bottom we have this reddening energy here androgene might not be pronouncing that right rebus the androgene androgene that blue rose there all right so we will read one of these maybe both of these at some point copper at the bottom copper conducts energy right one of the most prominent messages that has been coming through for the collective lately has been this message of like generating energy basically like charging up pulling energy in um, and I guess the simply put how that would look is really just taking taking a break taking a pause really really spending some you time um, but even <clears throat> Pulling away from things like social media or things that keep you distracted things that drain your energy or take a lot of your energy or time at this time to kind of cultivate the energy that we're going to need uh, as we step through this portal so I think yeah spirit let's start with pile one grab a chariot flying out right off rip what's the message for pile one please spirit
<clears throat> Advice for pile one. So pile one, this, okay, we have Cancer energy out here. We have Leo energy. We have Libra energy. <clears throat> Eight of wands on the bottom, this this message is all about movement. If you picked pile one, we have the chariot, the knight of wands, seven of cups, justice. So there seems to be something about making a decision here, taking action, and truly aligning with divine will, right? And I mean, this is something that's very energetic, very karmic, something that's a death. This is like alignment with destiny here, with the justice and the chariot this is forward movement um it seems like <clears throat> somebody is you're kind of faced you're, it feels like crossroads type energy where there's a, some type of decision to make the advice here four of pentacles with the sun eight of wands on the bottom of the deck this is all about getting out of your comfort zone pile one stepping out of your comfort zone and and to me this four of pentacles the way it's been coming through has been a message for the col the collective to let go of this old life and that's it's so much more than words right because we are rewiring our brains we are clearing we are healing deep traumas and fragmentation right and this is kind of like the integration phase of integrating this new you and continuing to shed and correct, you know, whatever. So this four of pentacles is also about, you know, it's a message that you lack nothing really, right? And so tapping into your own internal abundance, right? <clears throat> the advice seems to be follow your bliss, get out of your comfort zone, face your fears, um, let loosen your grip a little bit. Maybe you have a vision. Um, this is the energy of um, being adaptable, rolling with the punches and, and letting things unfold organically, right? And this is like, it's actually going to turn out better than you would have thought, right? And so relaxing, loosening our grip a little bit. What lights you up though, pile one? What lights you up? What brings you joy? what's what are the most healing for your soul decisions you can make at this time when it has to do with anything right any choice you're faced with what is the best for my soul what is the best for me on a soul level and this is moving from that space big alignment here this is being in the midst of an alignment and with the eight of wands it's like things are happening fast so Hope that message makes sense. Pile one, four of swords, ace of pentacles. Rest at the red light until that thing turns green. You gonna see it when it turns green. That's been really the collective message lately. So let's see what we have for pile two. <clears throat> what's what's going on with pile two? Eight of, eight of cups flipping over. What's going on with pile two, please, spirit? This energy feels pretty intense, too, with this reddening energy. I mean, I'm just seeing this red passion, anger. Um, I've been seeing a lot of that red energy through this eclipse. All right, what's the message for pile two, please, spirit? Damn, y'all. <clears throat> So four of pentacles was the first card to jump out. For pile two, this may have this may have to do with uh, letting a specific someone or relationship go. We have the four of pentacles, like I said, first card to hop out, six of cups, moon child, Cancerian energy coming through, Piscean maybe as well, um, two of pentacles, ace of wands. 
what what is the advice here this is about you know being adaptable rolling with the phases and cycles um and taking action toward what is peaceful toward what brings balance taking action to bring in this to, to bring yourself into a space of peace and, and ground and being grounded and, and happy right what is the advice magician what is the advice here for pile two <clears throat> jeez it seems like this is so similar judgment definitely about a release and a decision this feels like it's about not settling pile two, not settling for less than what you're worth. And again, this message of like dreaming outside of your perceived limitations. What is the advice for pile two? Dang. Yeah, this is, it's crazy. Taking action, man, to bring in this balance. release rising up into this new dimension <clears throat> make it, it really kind of is you've you've grown a lot this is about y using the tools that you've acquired on your journey here and truly trusting and following your intuition right moon child phases and cycles definitely intuition maybe even fears facing fears here This might have to, this may have to do with you speaking, aligning with what's really true for you or, or getting something off your chest here. Um, maybe, like I said, cutting someone off. It's like you, you've seen things as they truly are piled to. And now it's about like, what are you going to do with that? With what you know now, <clears throat> now that you see things, now that they've clicked, now that they make sense, what do we do with that judgment, right? judgment two of swords king of swords it's like let's go we're not gonna stay stuck in this energy we're gonna get out of this uncomfortable energy we're gonna release forgive right judgment is also about judgment you know releasing judgment over ourselves over others it seems like you've learned a lot piled to through these relationships and situations you've been through. And there seems to be kind of this message of taking that and, and working with it now. So I hope that makes sense. And it has been so crazy how the messages have just been like so, so similar. And then seeing it on a more individual level and how it's the same thing but different for everyone has been so wild what's the message for pile three please spirit what is the message for pile three here what's the message for pile three Whew. right off rip this has to do wow this has to do with being able to receive um pile three hold the line is is your message you are moving into a victory for sure spirit said the main thing to focus on right now is staying grounded staying balanced keeping your energy good and um it's like keeping your aura your frequency your energy in a space of like attraction what that looks like <clears throat> if we have a voice, a program in our head that's just playing and it's like causes us to be stressed out or stuck in some type of loop that on an energetic level can be an energy in our aura that like repels things, pushes out or maybe even on the other side of that coin attracts certain things that are at a frequency that we really do not want to be dealing with or experience right this is like your energy your frequency your emotional state 
making sure that you're staying on top of that and nurturing that, honoring yourself, your emotions at this time. It, it really feels like staying grounded for you, pile three, seven of wands, hold the line, six of wands. You have a victory here. This is all about pile three, you stepping into the limelight, you letting your light shine bright, nine of pentacles and being open to receive all that the universe has for you. It feels like pile three has really, really been working. Like you've been doing the, you've been doing the work, you've been rolling with the punches. I feel like the whole collective has, but there's something here where pile three it feels like there's not as much adjustment needed as there was in pile one and two where there was a need to get out of the comfort zone or release with those this is really about opening up to receiving and definitely trusting your intuition at this time pile three your intuition is on 10. all right so what's the advice for pile three the fool the tower let the divine clear your way don't try to fight it ten of pentacles as on the split here so fool tower it's like anything that's being cleared roll with it spirits like pile three just trust we got you just trust so this is just about rolling with spirit and trusting at this time so what is the advice for pile three wheel of fortune page of wands right chariot <clears throat> take an action as you're guided yo hierophant and death is like you're ascending to the next level of your spiritual journey you're ascending to the next level of your gifts and abilities your intuition your healing abilities um also you know this is the death this is the this is where the old you ceases to exist right like maybe even holding a symbolic funeral for the old life for the old self um as you're as you're meditating on this flame on this fire to run through that picture your old self and old life and hold a funeral for it and you know mourn it if you need to but then as you're looking into the flame then we put our prayers in the air right then we get into this the spiritual space emotional space mental space that we need to be in um in order to let this new vision flow through us in order to connect with that right so advice though really if you see the chariots here has no reins family trust and believe that chariot is going to get to where it needs to go successfully victoriously so really holding on tight <laughs> right rooting down wheel of fortune as this wheel turns y'all been on that thing at the park when you were a kid that spins around we're just holding on right now right definitely wheel turning in your favor pile three knight of cups dream bigger ten of swords eight of cups release the past family that's a message for everybody devil um congratulations collective congratulations <clears throat> the reddening indicates a full expression of the work everything is alive the heart pumps the cells celebrate the blood sings its way through the body what was dormant has been awakened what was once considered base is now noble aches and pains are in integrated shadows are acknowledged and interwoven hold on one sec fam. boom boom all right Shadows are acknowledged and interwoven. When the reddening card appears, it signifies health, power, a climaxing of the work, a coalescing of what has been learned. The laboratory is no longer separate from the alchemist or from the work, but the three are now one. What occurs in the body is reflected in the world and vice versa. Through the process of reddening, we move out of the head and into the physical body. More specifically, we reach the heart. 
It's there that the alchemist finds the sacred ingredients of power and kindness. Om Namah Shivaya. It says, go deeper. Read the poem, The Red Wheelbarrow by William Carlos Williams. What a dope name. And then it says, take note of how many cards in your reading contain the color red. Both of them back to that's what it, we even said that too. It says, you may sense the physical vitality of the um, querent by the presence or absence of this life force color. Um, to me, it's very present. It's very prominent. It is a lot of energy. It is screaming Aries season. It is screaming total solar eclipse energy. It is screaming, um, you know, it's go time, right? And then with that copper down here as well, I feel like this is representing the transits and everything working in tandem to generate this energy, right? So uh, let's read this one's what? 62. Hopefully I'm androgyny, androgyny or androgen, androgyny. I think I'm gonna say like that, that feels right. Creative transcendence, multiplicity, and the artist. It says the androgyny is a deeply revered image in alchemy. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Born of Hermes and Aphrodite. Hermaphroditos. Hermaphroditos has been classically depicted as a balanced union of div divine masculine, the sun, and divine feminine, the moon. Whoa, how crazy with the eclipse, huh? Yet today's alchemist knows that the androgyny is far more nuanced than that. It encompasses the infinite spectrum and reveals itself in ever-changing non-binary forms. The divine hermaphrodite defies definition as it is a deeply personal felt it is a deeply personal felt experience accessing this fluid and enlightened state requires us to slip into the contradictory realm of the senses breath by breath we are drawn into our limbs our fluids our orifices organs and cells we let go of the rules and labels judgment is suspended the gods are present as are the creative mysteries of the underworld for a brief moment, we hold all of our complexities in one loving form, like a newborn. We know not our name, gender, age, or location. We are the embodied artist, embraced unconditionally by sun and moon. Go deeper. Read the poem, The Idea of Ancestry by Etheridge Knight, K-N-I-G-H-T. <clears throat> it says, um, through an alchemical image of completion, the androgyny makes a beginner of all of us, regardless of gender, orientation, and sexual preferences, allowing yourself to know, n allow yourself to know nothing today. Hollow bone, right? Make a list of your contradictions. Start with sometimes I'm this and sometimes I'm that, and keep writing quickly until you feel the inclusive power of this archetype awaken. How, how beautiful though i mean this is literally like all systems go and this sun and moon together today is just the omen for it right it is the omen for this beautiful um powerful shift so let's grab one more of these and then we will charge our candles up or we'll charge our candle up We'll light that and then we'll we'll open this book up and see what comes through thank you all so much for stopping through tonight wasn't sure how many people were going to come through and wasn't even sure honestly if i was going to have the energy um after the personals tonight but always always provided with what is needed Jimmy, the wings win. Wow, 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 these beautiful, beautiful cards. I'm like in love with these cards. So smoke, you guys, okay? This was just on the bottom and I shuffled and we grabbed this card out. It, it really wants to be seen. So Chiron, right? These Chiron wounds right now may be 
making things a bit hazy. I'm hearing even brain fog, maybe for some of you experiencing brain fog or confusion, maybe even like nausea or things like that. Um, and maybe just on a, you know, our wounds and this, these play out in very subtle ways could be making things a little bit smoky for us right now, a bit blurry, a bit hard to see clearly. Okay, so with that being said, as I say that, I split. We have the androgyny again. It's like balance, balance, balance. Um, sap of the moon plant, succulus, luna, lunari. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let's see what number is this. 51, 61. Yeah, man. The energies have been so nuts. Some truly off the wall comments, um, even on even online and stuff lately. <laughs> Succus. Succus lunaria is an ancient substance <clears throat> said to be born of water, plant, and moonlight. This elixir develops in the depth of night and is thus a metaphor for the wellspring of the unconscious. When this alchemical magic is afoot, it's all about dreams. The answer you're seeking will not come from the intellect nor the opinion of others. It will surface from the depths as if rising from the ancient waters of your memory. The work is to rest, restore, and awaken your celestial senses. Do this by pausing. By releasing your grip, the sap of the moon plant signifies that you're in a, the deep territory of destiny and the imagination. This is a mythic moment. The dream is waiting to show itself, but awaits your sincere invitation. Ask and rest. All will be revealed. It says to go deeper for this card, track your dreams for the next three nights. Over here we have, there are many names for this sacred elixir. Soma, Nectar, Aqua Vitae, Aqua Nostra, and Vinum Ardens, to name a few. Remember, dreams are the mother tongue of humanity, family, so definitely keeping a dream journal for the next few days, paying attention to your visions, your downloads, your um, intuitive nudges, your psychic messages, and all of those things. It says sap of the moon plant said to be linked to the pineal gland and can be increased by the practice of meditation. Sitting for a few moments in the evening is especially beneficial, especially before bed when your body is naturally starting to wind down. Um, and that is what I recommend doing tonight. If you haven't already done all of your eclipse uh, shenanigans and everything, I would definitely recommend getting a tea light or some type of candle tonight, lighting it. Um, light it, connect with it. We're going to activate this um, with this candle. We're going to charge this in a sec and then light it. Then in our own time, connect with a flame. Meditate, spend a few minutes grounding and centering and then sp spend a few breaths, a few minutes combing your energetic field, your aura, combing it out. Picture yourself moving any energetic debris as we breathe in, breathe out and we imagine ourselves clearing with our hands and picture your hands glowing white right after you center and connect and ground comb your aura picture anything floating down to the bottom of your aura and that cord is going to be dropped from the bottom of your aura down into the center of the earth and all of this debris is going to make its way through that as the earth is going to pull it out of you as you do that do it until you feel clean and clear you will literally feel lighter you may feel tingles you may feel crown chakra tingles then switch gears bring yourself just open yourself up to god source universe divine your guides whatever you're comfortable with jesus right open yourself up to your higher power and just connect say i love you i'm here thank you um what does this next vision look like? Let's get it. I'm ready. I'm open. I'm here. I'm all ears. 
right? Or whatever your question may be, but I feel like being open to the vision so that way we it can come through and we can spend some time connecting with that flame and visualizing being in that energy being in that frequency evoking those emotions of gratitude happiness joy whatever it may be right so i recommend that if you feel guided to do that definitely a very powerful time to do that and also you know this eclipse is very symbolic um this will be playing out over the next year this will be playing out over the next several years but you know this is just the the spark this is the ignition right um so be kind to yourself there's no rush to be anywhere collective yeah so let's charge this take a few deep breaths family i'm going to take a couple deep breaths myself ground center i'm going to connect to the divine connect to the earth right i'm going to do the kabbalistic cross and connect that way you can do whatever way suits you if you are not sure the kabbalistic cross i have a video in the know thyself gno know thyself playlist um, called the kabbalistic cross feel free to check it out So now take a few deep breaths for those of you that are new to this, right? For those of you that know, you know, but for those of you that are new, take a few deep breaths, ground down, picture your heart chakra or your um, tipereth center here, your energetic center in your heart space. Breathe into that, picture it glowing brighter and brighter. When you get it glowing as bright as you can, then take a deep breath in, hold it, and as you slowly exhale, guide that energy, that prana out of your hand into this candle and imagine this candle being filled up with that white or gold light. Basically what you're doing here is you're just putting your energy in the candle. You can put an intention if you'd like, feel free. But basically the way that we've been doing it through these eclipses is letting god letting our absolute highest self for the highest benefit of all right letting that guidance come through and be prominent for us right so this is basically activating our higher self our highest self um and helping to make our our guidance loud and clear right so we can't miss it um and then like i said this will activate and then that'll make this meditation that you do on your own time even more powerful you can feel free to pause it if you need to. I'm going to take this down now and light it. Remember, linear time, the way that we perceive it, does not exist. So anytime you want to do this, even if you save it for another day, um, it will be just as powerful, right? What matters is the power of your mind, your faith, family, and size of a mustard seed is plenty. The size of a mustard seed is plenty, family um yes i'm excited so i'm i might just open this up or we might find some of read one of the shorter i actually have one marked here maybe we'll do both maybe we'll divine a message and then we'll read one of the shorter Tell that little mountain to move from here to there, Brittany. Straight, straight up. Tell that little mountain. Oh, and then for today, what is it? The 8th? <clears throat> Collective. How God's power and strength 
uniquely show in you will never be duplicated by anyone else. The world needs your light. 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 Beads of Wisdom, the Atma Upanishad. <clears throat> this is one of the minor Upanishads. Oops. Okay, so I just want to show you the cover of this. For anybody that may be interested. <clears throat> the Upanishads intro introduced and translated by Eknath Iswaran. Okay. This is the teaching of the sage Angiras. Purusha manifests itself three ways. As the outer inner and the supreme self skin flesh vertebral column hair fingers toes nails ankles stomach navel hips thighs cheeks eyebrows forehead head eyes ears arms sides blood vessels, nerves, these make up the outer self, the body subject to birth and death. And the reason I wanted to dive into this a little bit, family, was because the message has been to pause, to chill. A lot of, you know, most people in today's day have no idea how to chill, how to stop their mind, how to slow down. So, Tapping into these Upanishads or any type of scriptures or anything, texts like that, can help us to help bring us into presence, right? They're good meditations. So um, for those of you that do not want to stick around for that, it's like kind of like a meditation. Um, I just want to say I love you and thank you for stopping through, being here with us. For those of you who want to stick around, though, let's get it. The inner self perceives the outside world made up of earth, water, fire, air, and space. It is the victim of likes and dislikes, pleasure and pain, and delusion and doubt. It knows all the subtleties of language. It enjoys dance, music, and all of the fine arts. It delights in the senses, recalls the past, reads the scriptures, and is able to act. This is the mind, the inner person. The supreme self, adorned in the scriptures, can be realized through the path of yoga. Subtler, Ooh. subtler than the banyan seed, subtler than the tiniest grain, even subtler than the hundred thousandth part of a hair. This self cannot be grasped, cannot be seen. The Supreme Self is neither born nor dies. He cannot be burned, moved, pierced, cut, nor dried. Beyond all attributes, the Supreme Self is the eternal witness, ever pure, indivisible, and uncompounded, far beyond the senses and ego. In him, Conflicts and expectations cease. He is omnipresent, beyond all thought, without action in the external world and without action in the internal world, detached from the outer and inner. This supreme self purifies the impure. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. 
That was the Atma Upanishad, A-T-M-A. Some of them are really long. I don't want to get into that. I'd rather have that be a separate. Maybe we'll just uh, all of this is full. All of that is full from fullness. Fullness comes when fullness is taken away from fullness. Fullness still remains. What is the cause of the cosmos? Is it Brahman? From where do we come? By what live? Where shall we find peace at last? What power governs the duality of pleasure and pain by which we are driven? Time, nature, necessity, accident, elements, energy, intelligence. None of these can be the first cause. They are all effects whose only purpose is to help the self rise above pleasure and pain. In the depths of meditation, Sages saw within themselves the Lord of Love, who dwells in the heart of every creature. Deep in the hearts of all he dwells, hidden behind the gunas of law, energy, and inertia. He is one. He it is who rules, who rules over time, space, and causality. The world is the wheel of God turning around and round with all living creatures upon its rim. The world is the river of God, flowing from him and flocking back to him. On this ever-revolving wheel of life, the individual self goes round and round through life after life, believing itself to be a separate creature, until it sees its identity with the Lord of Love and attains immortality in the indivisible whole. He is eternal reality. Sing the scriptures and the ground of existence. Those who perceive him in every creature merge in him and are released from the wheel of birth and death. The Lord of Love holds in his hand the world composed of the changing and the changeless, the manifest and the unmanifest, the separate self, yet not, aware of, not yet aware of the Lord, goes after pleasure, only to become bound more and more. When it sees the Lord, there comes an end to its bondage. Conscious spirit and unconscious matter both have existed since the dawn of time with Maya appearing to connect them, misrepresenting joy as outside of us. When all of these three are seen as one, the self reveals his universal form and serves as an instrument of the divine will. All is change in the world of senses, but changeless is the supreme Lord of love. Meditate upon that. Be absorbed in him. Wake up from this dream of separateness, duality. No God and all fetters will fall away. No longer identifying yourself with the body. Go beyond birth and death. All of your desires will be fulfilled in him who is one without a second. Know him to be enshrined in your heart always. Truly, there is nothing more in life to know. Meditate and realize that this world is filled with the presence of God. Fire is not seen until the fire stick rubs against another. Though the fire remains hidden in the fire stick, so does the Lord remain hidden in the body until he is revealed through the mystic mantram. Let your body be the lower fire stick. Let the mantram be the upper. Rub them against each other in meditation and realize the Lord. Like oil and sesame, sesame seeds, like butter and cream, like water and springs, like fire and fire sticks, so dwells the Lord of love, the self, in the very depths of the consciousness. 
realize him through truth and meditation. The self is hidden in the hearts of all, as butter lies hidden in the cream. Realize the self in the depths of meditation, the Lord of love, supreme reality, who is the goal of all knowledge. This is the highest mystical teaching. This is the highest mystical teaching. May we harness body and mind to see the Lord of life who dwells in everyone. May we ever with a one-pointed mind strive for blissful union with the Lord. May we train our senses to serve the Lord through the practice of meditation. Great is the glory of the Lord of life, infinite, omnipresent, all-knowing. He is known by the wise who meditate and conserve their vital energy. Here, O children of immortal bliss, you are born to be united with the Lord. Follow the path of the illumined ones and be united with the Lord of life. Kindle the fire of Kundalini deep in meditation. Bring your mind and breath under control. Drink deep of divine love and you will attain the unitive state. Dedicate yourself to the Lord of life who is the cause of the cosmos. He will remove the cause of all of your suffering and free you from the bondage of karma. Be seated within the spinal column erect and turn your mind and senses deep within with the mantram echoing in your heart. Cross over the dread sea of birth and death. Train your senses to be obedient. Regulate your activities to lead you to the goal. Hold the reins of your mind as you hold the reins of restive horses. Choose a place for meditation that is clean, quiet, and cool. A cave with a smooth floor without stones and dust, protected against the wind and rain and pleasing to the eye. In deep meditation, aspirants may see forms like snow or smoke. They may feel a strong wind blowing or a wave of heat. They may see within them more and more light, fireflies, lightning, sun, or moon. These are signs that they are well on their way to Brahman. Health, a light body, freedom from cravings, a glowing skin, sonorous voice, fragrance of body. These signs indicate progress in the practice of meditation. As a dusty mirror shines bright when cleansed, so shine those who realize the self, attain life's goal, and pass beyond all sorrow. In the supreme climax of samadhi, they realize the presence of the Lord within their heart, freed from impurities. They pass forever beyond birth and death. The Lord dwells in the womb of the cosmos, the creator who is in all creatures. He is that which is born and to be born. His face is everywhere. Let us adore the Lord of life, who is present in fire and water, plants and trees. Let us adore the Lord of life. Let us adore the Lord of life. Om Shanti, 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 Om. Needed that. Family, 737 in here, angel number 737. Let's see what Spirit's saying. Oops. For those reflecting on past, 737 angel numbers suggest learning from the experiences of the past. Using that wisdom create a better future. It may signify closure and healing, guiding individuals to let go of negative emotions and embrace personal growth. Take that. Thank you, spirit. Collective void family. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much for being here. You guys, chill chill sb thank you so much for the super thanks hold up y'all anybody who sent the super thanks tonight thank you so much okay hold up here we go dang you guys hope y'all know i'm never it's never i'm never ignoring you um amy thank you so much chill sb thank you 
Cy Hamlin, thank you so much. You guys are so appreciated. Brittany, thank you so much. My sister, always, always, always appreciate y'all. I love y'all so much, man. It's so good to be able to kick it with y'all on the Eclipse. Um, like I said, I wasn't trying to take up too much of your time. I just wanted to tap in real quick. So I hope everybody had a blessed Eclipse, man. Proud. I'm so, so, so proud of y'all. I'm proud of the collective. It's such a blessing to have this space. Um, it, it, it really blows my mind, you know, this collective that has been built um, over the past couple of years here. All of the swimmers. I love our swim meets. I love the fam. I appreciate y'all, man. Joseph Miguel. Yeah, fam, I'm just about to tap out, but you can always rewind it. You can go back to this anytime. Um, and yeah, y'all for sure. For real, for real, for real. Connect with your candle. Connect with your vision. Connect with your um, prayers tonight. Family, very powerful portal. Sponge, thank you so much. Brittany, you said it's it's crazy because y'all have y'all are just y'all are a huge part of my journey as well. And I, you know, I even since starting this channel. I've learned I, I learn every single day y'all teach me I, I mean I learn every single day it actually feels like I know less and less I learn more and more I know less and less I'm just like <laughs> felt like I was a little further a few years back but we all you know the ego likes to make make things look that way but it's been a beautiful journey y'all the highs the lows the ups and downs y'all inspire me as well so blessed to have these swim these slim swim classes slim classes much love to all of you though again thank you all so much for being here um i think what do we have tomorrow sagittarius can be on the lookout um so yeah be blessed y'all i appreciate you thank you thank you thank you from the bottom of my heart um i will see y'all soon